Wolves and humans have a complicated relationship. We often vilify the big bad wolf in fiction and real life, but we are also constantly fascinated by these smart social mammals and we haven't always clashed. Our ancestors, for example, even formed an alliance with wild wolves, sometimes in the late Pleistocene epoch, eventually giving us the unparalleled friends we now know as dogs. Despite all this history, many people don't understand wolves as well as they think. Domesticated dogs can be very different from their wild relatives who haven't spent millennia learning to love us. And due to the decimation of wild wolves by humans in recent centuries, most people alive today have little or no personal experience with wolves aside from dogs. Widespread myths also distort our view of wolves, from misconceptions about alpha wolves to more harmful misunderstandings about the threat wolves pose to humans. Wolves can be dangerous, of course, but attacks on humans are extremely rare, as wolves generally don't see us as prey. In hopes of shedding more light on what wolves are really like, outside fables and fairy tales, here are a few unexpected facts you may not know about these unique allies and adversaries of humanity. To start our story and show the value of wolves, we must go back to the 1920s, when in the Yellowstone National Park, government policy allowed the extermination of Yellowstone's grey wolf, the apex predator. That policy triggered an ecosystem collapse known as Trophic Cascade. What followed was the explosion of elk population, without their primary predator, resulting in severe overgrazing of willows and aspen needed by beavers for food, shelter and dam building. Without wolves, the coyote became the apex predator, driving down populations of red fox, rodents and birds that prey on small animals. Beavers virtually disappeared in the northern range, dams disintegrated, turning marshy ponds into streams, massive loss of mature willows and aspens, heavy stream erosion, many plant and animal species were affected. A lot of scavenger species suffered without year-round wolf kills to feed on. In 1985, the policy changed. Through use of the Endangered Species Act, the conservation community reintroduced the grey wolf to restore balance. The impact was dramatic. Today, biodiversity is enriched and scavenger species reap the benefits of regular wolf-supplied meals. As the wolf returns, coyote numbers drop by half, allowing antelope, rodents and fox populations to increase. After wolf reintroduction in the northern range, elk numbers drop and beaver colonies increase from 1 to 12. Insects, songbirds, fish and amphibians thrive all thanks to the grey wolf. And now let's keep understanding the wolf, starting with its name. The word wolf usually refers to the grey wolf, Canis lupus, the most widespread and familiar wolf species still in existence. Grey wolves are widely thought to have evolved from smaller Mossback wolf, a now extinct canid that lived in Eurasia during the middle to late Pleistocene. Thanks to adventurous adaptable ancestors, great wolves have thrived for thousands of years across huge swaths of both Eurasia and North America, where they diverged into a variety of subspecies. They traveled from Eurasia to North America by canoe, of course, they were quite the builders. There's still debate over how wide that variety is, with scientists dividing them into anywhere from 8 to 38 subspecies. In North America, this include the ghostly arctic wolf, the large northwestern wolf, the small Mexican wolf, and the eastern or timber wolf, which some authorities consider a separate species. There's also the enigmatic red wolf, Canis rufus, a rare canid classified either as a distinct species or a subspecies of grey wolf, with possible coyote ancestry in either case. The Eurasian wolf is the largest of several old world subspecies and the most abundant with the largest range. Others include the northerly tundra wolf, the high elevation Himalayan wolf, the desert dwelling Arabian wolf and the plains sprawling Indian wolf. Aside from grey wolves, the genus Canis also includes closely related species such as coyotes and golden jackals, as well as two other species now commonly known as wolves, the Ethiopian wolf, Canis siminis, and the African golden wolf, Canis lupuster. Unfortunately, there used to be a lot more wolves. Even with this diversity and the relative abundance of grey wolves globally, Earth now has fewer wolves and fewer kinds that it once did. The fossil records has revealed an array of interesting wolf and wolf-like species, for example, including the famous dying wolf, Aesion dirus, as well as the hypercarnivorous xenocyons, or strange dogs, which may be ancestors of modern African wild dogs and dolls. The grey wolf was once the most widely distributed mammal on Earth, according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, but persecution by people has helped reduce its range by about one third. Several unique subspecies were lost along the way, including the Florida Black Wolf, the Great Plains Wolf, the Mississippi Valley Wolf, as well as old world species such as the Japanese Wolf, Sicilian Wolf, and Hokkaido Wolf.
Dire wolves weren't actually wolves. The now extinct dire wolf was common across North America until 13,000 years ago when much of the continent's megafauna vanished amid natural climate changes. Dire wolves were comparable in size to today's largest grey wolves, but they had bone crushing jaws and may have focused on bigger prey like horses, bisons, mastodons, ground sloths. Dire wolf fossils suggest a strong resemblance to modern grey wolves, and based on morphological similarities, scientists have long assumed the two were closely related. In early 2021, however, scientists revealed surprising results after sequencing DNA from dire wolf soft fossils. Dire wolves and grey wolves are only very distant cousins, as reported in the journal Nature, and their similarities seem to be the result of convergent evolution than rather close relation. Dire wolf DNA indicates a highly divergent lineage that split from living canids 5.6 million years ago. The researchers wrote with no evidence of interbreeding with any living canid species. When we first started to study, we thought that dire wolves were just beefed up grey wolves, so we were surprised to learn how extremely genetically different they were, so much so they likely could not have interbred, said senior author Laurent Franz. Hybridization across canis species is thought to be very common. This must mean that their wolves were isolated in North America for a very long time to become so genetically distinct. Alpha wolves are just moms and dads, nothing more. Grey wolves usually like to live in packs of 6 to 10 individuals led by a dominant breeding pair. You may have heard someone refer to these pack leaders as alpha wolves or males and females who supposedly gain dominance by fighting within their packs, eventually becoming the group's leaders and exclusive breeders. This view is widespread, but misleading. Many wolf experts now consider alpha wolf an outdated term, arguing it doesn't accurately describe the way a wolf pack works. We now know alpha wolves are actually just parents, and the other pack members are just their offspring. Wolves often mate for life, and their family unit can include a mix of juveniles and young adults from multiple breeding seasons. Alpha implies competing with others and becoming top dog by winning a contest or battle. However, most wolves who lead packs achieve their position simply by mating and producing pups, which then became their pack. In other words, they are merely breeders or parents, and that's all we call them today. So wolves are family animals. Adult grey wolves can survive on their own and may need to for a while after leaving their birth packs. Still, wolves are highly social and often mate for life once they do find a partner. This marks the beginning of a new wolf pack or nuclear family, the basic social unit for wolves. Both grey and red wolves breed once per year in late winter or early spring and both have a gestation period of about 63 days. They generally have 4-6 to six pups in a litter, which are born blind deaf and heavily dependent on their mother. Pups are cared for by all members of the pack, including their parents and other siblings. They develop quickly, exploring outside the den after 3 weeks and growing to nearly adult size within 6 months. Wolves reach maturity at 10 months but may stay with their parents for a few years before moving out. Wolves do howl at night but contrary to popular belief, these soulful calls have nothing to do with the moon. They convey long distance messages to other wolves who may be able to hear them from up to 10 miles or 15 kilometers away. Howling can help wolves assemble their pack, locate missing pack members, or defend territory among other purposes. Wolves also make other vocalizations to communicate, such as growling, barking, and whimpering. They use body language too, including eye contact, facial expressions, and body posturing. These silent communication channels can be useful when hunting. A gaze signal, for example, may help wolves coordinate during group hunts without making sounds that would alert the prey. Wolves' powerful sense of smell also plays a key role in their communication, letting them share information through multiple types of scent marking, including raised leg like urination, squat urination, defecation, and scratching. Wolves seem to be stressed by our presence, dog's presence, and vehicles. We may not be able to fully understand the emotional experience of another species, but studying cortisol levels in fecal samples is, is one way scientists can estimate stress in wild animals. Comparing those hormone levels with other data about the animal's daily lives, we might then point to the source of stress. In one study of 450 fecal samples from 11 different wolf packs, researchers found the death of a pack member likely induces important stress in the remainder of the social unit. Other research suggests wolves may be stressed by the presence of humans, at least in some contexts. They don't seem to like snowmobiles, according to a study conducted at three US national parks where grey wolves' fecal glutocorticoid levels were higher in areas and times of heavy snowmobile use. Also, the presence of a local free-ranging dog population has been linked to higher stress in wolves. And that's because they need a lot of space. Wolf packs 
need large territories to supply them with enough prey. Grey wolf territories range in size from 50 to 1,000 square miles, according to the US Fish and Wildlife Service. Wolves can cover large areas while hunting, traveling up to 50 kilometers per day or 30 miles a day. They primarily trot at about 10 km per hour or 5 to 6 miles per hour, but can run as fast as 40 miles for short distances or 60 km per hour. Like many apex predators, wolves play important ecological roles in their habitats. The example I used in the beginning of Yellowstone National Park, where native grey wolves were eliminated by 1920, initially was viewed as a benefit. The loss of wolves lost its luster as the park's elf population exploded. Without wolves to reduce their numbers or chase them away from prime feeding areas, Yellowstone's growing elk herds began began to feast unsustainably. They ate young aspen tree to regenerate, devoured food sources needed by other species, and stripped important vegetation along the banks of streams and wetlands, increasing erosion. Since the reintroduction of wolves to Yellowstone, that began in 1995, elk have declined from a high 25,000 number to fewer than 5,000 number. Research has shown continued recovery of aspen, cottonwood, and willow trees, as well as a rebound for beavers and riparian songbirds in areas where they they had been declining or missing since the 1930s. Today, Yellowstone National Park is home to 100 wolves in 8 packs, while several hundred more live throughout the surrounding ecosystem. In the wild, wolves can live up to 13 years and up to 16 years in captivity. The main threat to wolf survival is habitat loss due to destruction, development, they are also threatened due to persecution by humans. Wolves are the largest members of the dog family. Wolves prefer to eat large animals like deer, elk and moose. When they get a successful kill, wolves do not eat in moderation. A single wolf can consume up to 9 kilos of meat in one sitting. The highest ranking wolf will eat first and what cannot be consumed is left to the scavengers, even though they may have to wait another 3 days for their next meal. This is why they are very important for the other species living in the same areas. Adult wolves have 42 teeth and wolf packs work together to hunt for food. The loss of one single wolf from a pack can damage the cohesion of the group and cause packs to break up. Pack sizes range from 3 to 20 wolves. Individual wolves in a pack play different roles in relation to the other wolves in the group. They will defend the territory from other wolf packs or other predators they might find a threat. Wolves are named the keystone species. Keystone species plays a unique and crucial role in the way an ecosystem functions. Without keystone species, the ecosystem in which they live would would be dramatically different or cease to exist. Yellowstone Park is a good example of this. Wolves prey on injured, sick, old, young and genetically inferior elk, moose and deer, allowing the healthy individuals to breed and continue their species. Humans do the opposite, thus weakening the entire herd of animals. Wolves also can help improve riparian areas, the wetland areas adjacent to rivers and streams. Wolves help redistribute ungulate herds, which allow vegetation to recover and grow along rivers and streams. In turn, this helps provide more food for beavers. Aquatic animals like frogs and aquatic plants benefit from increased beaver ponds. Additionally, shade created by the trees cools the waters, making the habitat better for many aquatic species. Wolves are not particularly fast, with a top speed of about 45 to 60 kilometers an hour for short strides. They instead rely on their hearing and sense of smell to detect prey. They have remarkable powers of endurance and are known to follow their target all day and night if necessary. Wolves feed their young by carrying chewed up food in their stomachs and throwing up or regurgitating it in front of the pups when they come back to the den. A wolf which has been driven from the pack or has left its pack is called a lone wolf. It avoids contact with other packs and rarely howls. He has nothing to say. The grey wolf has been the notorious villain of fables and fairy stories for centuries, yet this highly intelligent and sociable animal has done little to nothing to warrant its terrifying reputation. Another reason for their decline has been the dramatic reduction of their natural prey. This has largely been replaced by farm stock, which is protected by the use of poison, traps and guns. The final fate of wolves will depend on whether man is prepared to coexist with them. If you want to help wolves survive, you must do a few things. To prevent wolves from becoming used to human presence, which in turn may be fatal to wolves, a wolf that is scared by people will be scared by wolf hunters. They do not know to make the difference between friend or foe until the gun is out and it's too late for them. So, a wolf that's afraid of human is a living wolf. Don't make them think you are a friend. So, there are a few guidelines. Resist the temptation to approach wolves. Do not entice or allow wolves to come nearby. Do not feed wolves or leave food outdoors, including pet food. Do not approach fresh wolf kills, dens or rendezvous site. Do not let wolves become comfortable near human inhabited areas. Notify authorities 
about words that seem comfortable around people, seek human food or frequent human or livestock areas. Early intervention can keep a problem from getting worse. You won't get attacked and the poor wolf will not get killed by your mistakes. If you get a close encounter with a wolf, you should do the following. Stand tall and make yourself look larger. Calmly but slowly back away and maintain eye contact. If the rune does not run away immediately, continue making yourself large, keeping eye contact and backing away. Do not turn your back on the wolf or run away. If a dog is about to encounter a wolf, the dog should be brought to heel at the owner's side as quickly as possible and leashed. Standing between the dog and the wolf often ends the encounter. To avoid risk of injury to yourself, do not attempt to break up a physical fight between a wolf and a dog, except by using bear spray or a powerful hose from a safe distance. Say your goodbyes to your dog and go inside. If the wolf does not retreat and is acting aggressive by folding its tail high, raising its hackles, barking or howling, you should yell and throw things at it while continuing to back away. If it attacks, fight back aggressively to show you are too dangerous to be attacked. To ensure that there is no opportunity for your child or your pet to encounter any carnivore when camping, do not allow children to play away from camp or alone. Keep pets leashed and under control and everybody will be safe and happy. That's all for today. Wolves are beautiful, majestic creatures that brought us dogs, our best friends, and are key parts of ecosystems. We should not kill them in order to save a few sheep. Just give them the damn sheeps. Tell me in the comment section below if you've ever encountered a wolf, not at the zoo, but in wildlife. When I was a kid, I heard stories from my parents and grandparents about fear of walking outside or between villages because there were so many wolves that you might get eaten. There were some instances when people did get eaten because there weren't enough wild animals for them to eat. There were the dark times. That's it for today, don't forget to share, like, subscribe. I'd like to thank the last 7 persons that subscribe to this channel, you are the greatest. I'm Alex and until next time, beware of falling apples and wolves.